Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Next episode on the Cub Cadet Dozer build. Um, I've put a little bit of time into it since um, I last filmed. I have um, painted, put, at least put the first coat of paint on the entire frame. I have, uh, I primed, I primed inside the frame, but I haven't, haven't painted that. Got the engine mount. Um, shelf just tacked in place at this point. The drive shaft is um, largely in place though it's not completely finished. I don't have the pulley attached. Its exact position will depend on the engine position so we'll have to get those there's there's alignment room for alignment here. Um, I milled the slot for the key in this shaft I'm waiting on two new flex discs for this coupling. I've pinned everything together. I can take these bolts out and disassemble it, so I'm in good shape there. I just have not um, put the final pin in this um, front hydro yet. Um, I had it in there, I removed it. Um, it's kind of a hassle to remove because there's not a lot of clearance underneath it. So I'm leaving, leaving the pin in there for the time being just to keep the holes aligned. Um, that's where I am on the frame. Got a couple of um, things I'm thinking about. One is um, foot position. And um, at this point, since I'm um, getting ready to start, once I get the engine in installed, get the seat position kind of um, decided, I need to arrange for space for my legs, or the operator's legs. Um, obviously if the track if the track comes all the way you know close to the frame there's no room to put your feet and I don't want to have to have my feet up high or forward or anything I think a more natural seated position would be more comfortable so my plan at this point is to fabricate um, foot uh, foot well um, which has sides to protect your leg from the moving tracks and the footwell will probably run the full length of the tracks, or at least most of the way back. And that will push the tracks out about six inches. So I will either have to fabricate or purchase spacers for these hubs. Now this is a standard four and a half, five stud, four and a half inch on center hub um, flange. So I should be able to get um, an extension so that my tracks, um, 10 inches wide, 9 inches wide, will start about here and come out. So I need to come out about 6 inches, 5 inches. Um, so that'll leave room for your feet beside the track. Um, a, a protective panel to protect your legs from the moving track. Um, and then the tracks out here and it makes sense to to do that because of the width as well I mean if you look at it from the front um, the width is fairly narrow you certainly wouldn't want to put treads directly on here eight or ten inches wide um, even if you even if you didn't have to worry about your leg position because it would put the track so close together that, I mean, it would be precarious, in my view, to operate. So we need to, we need to spread it apart, which, I mean, I anticipated this from, um, from the beginning that I would need to um, move these drive points out. Um, cantilevering the sprockets out from those hubs will not be a lot of stress on um, those extensions because they're not going to bear any weight. All the weight of the tractor will be borne by the idler wheels, the bogies that run underneath the track frame. So you don't have to worry about a lot of weight on those extensions. Now the extensions will be substantial, we'll, we'll be able to carry the load but they won't have to carry the whole weight of the tractor. Um, 
so that's why you know putting extensions on them is not going to not going to be a problem all right so I'm, I'm thinking about the footwell the extensions for um, the drive and idler sprockets and the track frame and those will come up after we get the engine the engine mounted I need to also work and I got a lot of things to think about here I need to also work on the controls so the controls for the hydros I need two levers to operate the two separate uh, trunnions on the two hydros um, so once I get the engine mounted the dash the hood the seat then I'll know where the controls go and now I'll need to work on you know getting the controls built and connected the levers uh, they're gonna be a pair of right now I'm thinking a pair of levers um, that will actuate arms on rotating shafts below the operator with rods to the swash plates the um, trunnion arms excuse me so um, I'll be working on several different things simultaneously um, so we'll see how things go what I decide to work on um, not really sure <laughs> not really sure which ones to work on first but I do know I need to get the engine so that's that's first um, I took the engine up to um, the house and degreased it and hosed it off and cleaned it off and then I've got it here on the bench and we're working on it here all right stick around let's see what we get done how things go Cut the keyway necessary for the bushing, which is quarter inch um, by quarter inch key. Um, so for the pulley, need the keyway. So that, that deburrs the edges of the keyway so they're not sharp and not likely to cut you. We can get the key in there. Let me see if I can find a piece of key stock. All right, I went to my pile of key stock and of course I've got everything but quarter inch. Um, eighth inch, five sixteenths, three eighths. No quarter. Okay, well, I'll have to get some key stock. We can at least, I can at least put this back on the tractor. And um, put the pulley on it. I need to drive this 
pin out to get the pulley on. I can do that. All right, so let's go put the pulley back on. Go ahead and get the two set screws started here. These set screws push, pull the bushing and the pulley together and the, the bushing is split so that creates, you know, compression on the shaft and um, gives you a secure fit. You haven't worked with pulleys like this um, I like them rather than just a pulley with a one inch bore uh, much wider variety of pulleys like this because many different pulleys have the same um, have the same bore, fit the same bushing, and the bushings come in different sizes. So it's a lot less, lot less expensive to make bushings different sizes than it is to make pulleys different sizes. Um, and there's also, interesting thing, um, there's another threaded um, thread here on the bushing. For these other two set screws, the threads are in the pulley. Um, here are the threads in the bushing, and you don't use this one except to remove it. So you take one of these, out, take these both out, and then you drive one into here, and that pushes the bushing out of the pulley. So that's the removal spot. So, I mean, it's it's um it's a very nice arrangement for pulleys. Okay, we can set this back. Let's go back and drive the pin for the flex connection. I'm going to do it up here on the anvil. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can see it, but these pins actually are called spiral, S-P-I-R-O-L, S-P-I-R-O-L, spiral pins. They um, have concentric roll of spring steel. Um, these are the heavy duty, there's two versions, these are heavy duty ones, you can get a slightly um, thinner material um, in a standard ro um, spiral pin. And um, some people in their tractors will try to use um, bolts, like quarter inch bolts in place of the spiral pins. 
Um, it's not advisable. The spiral pins are designed to take shock loads and stay in the um, in the hole since they are compressed when you drive them in and they spring back. So they do a better job of handling um, shock loads and still and staying in the hole. Um, if you put a bolt in the hole, like a quarter inch bolt, um, I mean that'll work for a while, but they tend to um, enlarge the holes, make them oval and get loose, and then they vibrate back and forth, and eventually they shear and if they don't ruin the shaft somehow, um, they shear the bolts and then the then proper pins don't fit. And then you got to go back with another bolt and eventually weld repair or replacement. So um, it's always best to use the spiral pins. All right, I'll put this shaft back in the tractor. I've got to do a couple things to the engine to get it ready to put uh, in the dozer. I... Um, Need to remove the front power takeoff. Oh, <laughs> here's my butchie. I got a new tripod. He's, it must taste good. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah. And of course, there comes Brutus. Got to get in the act. My good boys, my good puppies. All right, they're my little. All right, they're my little, little buddies. Um, okay, so remove the front PTO clutch assembly. Uh, modify the starter pulley basket, which I don't need the basket anymore, but I do need the starter pulley to get the shaft ready to receive the drive pulley. So um, that, and then um, we'll also clean it up and put a coat of paint on it, make it look like a Cub Cadet engine. All right.
I need to remove the power takeoff PTO in order to put the drive pulley on and uh, these it's these Cub Cadet PTOs mechanical PTOs from the 60s and early 70s cause a lot of people problems uh, there are three holes in the outside of the PTO casting here with set screws. All right, there's one. Now there's supposed to be two set screws in each hole. And I believe there's only one in that hole. So it doesn't feel like there's any in that hole. To be honest with you. All right, let's see what's in this hole. The key to getting these off is some penetrating oil. In this case, these are not too tight. This this engine is a, since it's a replacement engine. It's I don't know how old it is, but it's not 50 years old. So um, all right, again, that just has the bottom the bottom set screw in it. So I'm of the opinion here that those are the only set screws in here. I don't feel don't feel any others. And you notice this Allen wrench is turned down real short because it's important to have a good um, good surface on there, a good square end to fit the set screws snugly so it doesn't strip out. And so this has been ground down, I don't know, dozens of times. It used to be that long, but that's, that's the key. All right, now it feels like there is a set screw in here. So, Again, it rounded off the end of the wrench and grind it flat again.
got the set screw to back off a little bit, maybe enough to clear the bearing. Yep, there it comes. There we go. Yeah, so there was there was a set screw if you can see it right there. So, um, not sure we can get it out. All right. Remove this bearing, it's got a lock collar behind it. Uh, if it's installed correctly, let's see. All right, there's also a set screw. I believe that's the same. There's a small 7 16 nut. And a set screw. It's pretty tight. There we go. collar is actually loose so it was not installed properly I don't believe well okay so we can pull the bearing off All right, I just used this puller to remove the um, bearing, which was on the shaft. It came off pretty easily. And then there's a set screw in this, the collar for this basket. Um, it's keyed to the shaft here. So we're gonna use this pulley because we need it for the starter, but we don't need this basket on here, which engages the, um, teeth on the friction disc on the PTO clutch. So we'll cut this basket off and that'll give us space on the shaft for the drive pulley. When I got this engine in the 149, it came out of a 149 if I recall correctly, um, it was running. So it doesn't look like the seal's leaking. So I think it's in pretty good shape. Um, at least for the time being, we're going to run it as is. It's full of oil. So that's a good sign. Um, 
let's we'll clean it up a little bit. I've got the engine um, on here on the bench. I've pulled the carburetor and the coil off, um, pulled the, most of the tins off. I've left the flywheel tin cover on it. Of course, we've got the um, PTO clutch and the pulley starter pulley basket off. So I've been cleaning it, sprayed it a couple times with um, brake clean and it's pretty clean so it's ready to be um, primed and um, I've also got the the other parts over here the starter the tins um, coil the starter bracket so we'll go ahead and um, sand these lightly and then put a coat of primer on them and then um, when the primer dries we'll put a coat of paint um, and we'll go ahead and prime the prime the engine as well. So um, it's worth it's worth doing this now. Um, once we get the engine installed, it'll be a lot more difficult to um, to do all this. And um, I'm going to also uh, re rebuild the carburetor. Um, we may do that here in a few minutes as well. After I get this stuff primed, we'll rebuild the carburetor. Um, and I'm going to replace the points on this engine and we'll do a static timing. So basically a uh, complete tune up, get it back in good running condition before we put it um, in, the, in the dozer. Okay, let's get started on the, some painting, priming. So I can't really sand the coil, wipe it down with some acetone. That's all it needs.
There are two um, carburetor rebuild kits available for the Cub Cadets, these, at least these older ones. There's the 01, 75701, and 75702. So the 01 is for the 7, 8, 10, and 12 horsepower engines. The 02 is for the 12, 14, 16 um, engines. So we're going to use the 02 kit on this. Get a bowl gasket, no ring, um, a seat, valve, a couple washers, a f float pin. So take this apart. Interesting to see what's inside this bowl. That's pretty clean. Actually quite clean. All right, got the float, pull the pin, float looks good, it's got the little valve stem with the rubber tip. I mean, inside this carb looks good. I mean, um, I don't really see any any issues with it. So we'll go ahead and pull the adjustment screw. That's the throttle stop. Little carb cleaner here. say since this is so clean inside it's going to really require minimal make sure fuels coming through the jets main jet here So I think it's um, pretty simple repair here. Well, these parts in this carburetor do not match my kit. All right, since this carb is so clean, I think it's just a matter of um, replacing the gaskets. This carburetor is from a um, newer engine, so I'm going to say that um, that's why the parts don't look like they match. So we'll put it back together with the existing float valve gaskets we put new gaskets on it if I can get this one to go on here there we go
It's a Walbro carburetor. They're not as popular as the Carter carbs. All right, so we'll seat this. Bring it off two turns. All right, I'm going to replace the points. rolling the engine looking for the points to open and they don't open at all so we need to adjust them so they do open all right it's so opening right there when you hear someone talk about static timing these engines, and that's the preferred method for timing the engines, um, see if I can get you an image here in this. So you'll see uh, the mark on the flywheel, maybe. It says S. There's a S and a line there. And if you turn it a little bit more, you get a T in a line. All right, the T is top dead center. And do I get that there? The T is top dead center. The S is spark. So you want the points to open when the S lines up in the window there where that line on the flywheel lines up with this mark here on the... So that's where you want the points to open. So you adjust the points so they open when at, um, at, this, at this stage in the revolution. You can do that with... The best way to do that is with a vol, uh, multimeter an ohm, or an ohm meter and connect it to um, the ground and the wire on the points and um, rotate the engine until you get open circuit at when that S appears in the window. Okay, so I've got one lead on the body of the points, the other lead touching where the wire connects. I'm looking through the opening here at the flywheel, and I'm watching my multimeter, waiting for the circuit to open.
Now it's opening too early. Okay, I finally got the gap adjusted so that the points open right when the S shows in the window on the fly the flywheel, the S on the flywheel shows in the window. So I think we're timed. That's the static timing method. It can be a little tedious, of course. All right, let me just rotate this. Points are opening right there. Okay. Trying to get this little rubber grommet in the slot in this points cover. I need to cut I need to cut this basket off of this pulley. We need the pulley for the starter. But we don't need the basket, which is for the clutch, the PTO clutch. Um, I need to keep this hub and the welds in the middle, or I'd, um, you know, perhaps put it on the lathe and try to cut it off. But I don't think my I have a four jaw chuck big enough, and it'd just be just as easy to cut it off with the um, cut off disc. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's just take this over to the table and paint it, put a coat of primer on it.
And wiping it down with acetone. Advantage of this rust reformer spray is that you don't have to get every speck of rust off. A little bit of light surface rust will just be immobilized because this will convert it. Um, that's what I like about this. It reduces, I mean, unless you're going for a show quality finish, which this certainly is not providing, if you just want something that looks decent, this is great stuff. I think we're done right. painting for today. Got to let this primer dry overnight. Um, we'll come back, take some measurements of the um, oil pan. I thought I had a spare oil pan. I might have to go look again. It'd be easier to take the measurements off a spare oil pan than to turn this engine upside down. I need to drain the oil probably from it anyway. So um, maybe that's the next thing I'll do is drain the oil and we'll take the measurements on the oil pan so that we can fabricate the mounting plate for the engine. It'll bolt to the bottom of the engine and then the plate will sit on those two angle irons that we welded to the inside of the frame. All right, making good progress. Um, this is, you know, a little working on this engine is a little sidetrack from, you know, the dozer build, but it's all part of the same, the same effort. So, um, you know, it's one of those necessary things you got to get, got to get done. And it's better to do this cleanup and painting now than to try to take it apart and, and do it later. So that's the rationale. Um, all right, let me show you where I am. I've got the engine turned over on the side. I drained the oil from the sump. I've put studs in the four bolt holes in the oil pan, taken measurements, come up with a diagram for the um, platform that the engine will bolt to and that will sit on the shelf in the frame. And right now I'm thinking I'm gonna wait for my plasma cutter to come and Cutting out this plate will be one, my first project for the plasma cutter. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll film that or I'll record that um, and share that with you when, <laughs> when it happens or even, even if it happens. If I get frustrated with the machine, I may just cut it out by hand and with my metal cutting saw and do it the old fashioned way but I'm really anxious to get the plasma table working and it looks like a good simple project. So I'm going to take these dimensions in the house and um, put them in uh, th Fusion 360, create the G-code, so I'll be ready to cut it out when my plasma cutter comes. It was supposed to ship. Today is Sunday. It was supposed to ship Wednesday or Thursday, I got the email last week. So I should get it this week. Um, which means, um, you know, it may make it in the next, in the next um, video. I'm roughly on a one video a week schedule. So, um, you know, but I'm, 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 a, I am probably, by the time you see this, it will have been almost three weeks since I um, actually recorded it because I'm getting the videos done ahead of time so I have time to upload them and um, edit all the material and upload the, the, the files and, and then publish them on a weekly schedule. So um, you probably won't see this for a couple of weeks. By the time you see this, hopefully I'll be tearing up sheet metal on the plasma table. Um, so I've got uh, an embarrassing um, admission to make here. I kind of screwed up a little bit. Um, oh, there's my 
my Brutus. Um, so when I um, changed the frame around and made um, this hydro the front hydro, I have been laboring under the mistake and assumption that the engine could be turned around. I don't know why I was thinking that, but the engine needs to be in the same orientation. That is, the crankshaft pulley needs to face this direction. It needs to face this hydro. Now, when this was the front, um, it was no problem. The engine would sit here, the crankshaft pulley would sit out here, and I, I put the drive pulley right here. Matter of fact, it would fit on um, right here in this space, the space of this um, flex adapter. When I moved it down here, I turned the engine around and I was assuming the drive pulley would be here with the engine crankshaft facing rearward. Of course, that gives me the wrong rotation. Those engines counterclockwise, which would drive that clockwise and drive this one counterclockwise, exactly the opposite of what... I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so, I mean, the, the solution's not that big a deal. Um, I've moved the pulley from here to here. Fortunately, there's clearance above the transmission for the pulley. It does, I mean, there's a gap underneath the, the shaft here, so I can get a belt on. Um, in order to replace the belt, I, would li I will likely now have to um, unpin and probably unbolt this to slide a belt on. But my plan is to, once I you know, figure out the correct belt size, I'll install both belts. Um, I'm likely to um, in place a couple spare belts um, around the shaft so that they would be ready to go if I if I need them. At least that would that's my plan. So um, <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. All right, well that's what happens. It's not that big a deal. It may move the engine a couple inches one way. May back um, but that may not be a bad thing I'm thinking that I would like you know a couple inches between the hood and and this brace I do need to fabricate and I haven't and I will fabricate um, two gussets to go here diagonal triangular gussets um, I mean this needs to be stronger than just these these welds so I'm going to, I'll put in a triangular shape gusset and weld that in on both sides. I forgot to mention that earlier. That's in the plan. So um, anyway, relocated the drive pulley to here. Um, the engine location won't, won't move, but maybe an inch or, or two. So I did work on the um, engine plate. The UPS truck came and just, my wife just said that UPS truck delivered a big box. So I'm hoping that's my plasma cutter. I, um, I'll stick up here a picture of the um, engine plate that I designed in Fusion 360 last night and hope to be one of my first items to cut out on the plasma table. Um, Alright, so I got to finish painting. Um, to, to close out this episode, I'm going to finish painting the engine um, components here yellow. At least get the first coat of paint on them. Um, well, I'll probably get two coats of paint on them today. Um, get the engine um, put back together. And um, I'll show you the conveyor chain um, that I purchased, which may be the solution for my track build. So. We'll take a look at that um, last thing in this in this episode. All right, let's do some painting.
Well, I got the um, conveyor chain and sprocket, which um, I'm going to look at here, and I think it's going to be the um, basis for the chain that we make. So let's open that up and see what it looks like. All right, so this came from red bore chain and fastener. Um, I forget where they are. All right, so that's the sprocket. I don't need that. Um, well, I wasn't sure whether I would need this or not, so I ordered it anyway. That's the sprocket. Um, that's a substantial, I'm gonna say it weighs 25 or 30 pounds. So it looks like it's an inch thick. It's, it's seven eighths of an inch thick. All right, so that's kind of what I was hoping it would be. All right, and I'm gonna assume this is the chain. So that's pretty substantial chain. Looks like they Give me one. Connecting link. All right, so my first reaction is this is um, pretty much exactly what I was looking for. So All right, so I think that um, 
I think this chain will work. Um, if I put my hand here in the picture, you can get you know an idea of the scale of the of the chain. Um, it's supposed to be 2.6 inches on center, so that'll give me um, you know a five inch wide track. So these will be you know between each. So like this. I'll weld this and this, weld alternating links, the outside links to the bottom of the tread pads, track pads, and um, I think it'll work. Now the one thing I do need to do is I will need to put this in the mill and drill a whole circle, the five studs um, for the drive hub. My plan is to buy a second drive sprocket and to fabricate the idler sprockets, which will just be um, a pair of, as I'm thinking right now, a pair of 3 8 inch quarter or 3 8 inch plates with a spacer between them so that they'll be spaced off and will run on each, on each side of the chain. It looks like that stuff will work. All right, so I think we have a path forward on the on the tracks at this point. Uh, I was up at the house and my plasma cutter did come today. So um, I'm going to spend the next week playing with that. <laughs> All right. And, um, we'll come back next time with the, um, hopefully the plasma table working and I'll be cutting out the engine plate. I got a surprise today, a delivery. My um, long-awaited and eagerly anticipated um, Razor Weld 45 CNC Crossfire compatible. So that's the last thing I need to get the plasma table working. Um, so I've been waiting for it for, what, two months. Anyway, I'll have it um, hooked up hopefully by the next episode and we'll cut out the plate maybe cut out the plate engine mounting plate um, for the engine if i can't figure it out i'm going to cut the plate out by hand um, and we'll, I'll, I'll do it the old-fashioned way but i really would like to get the plasma table working uh, to do that so um, next time that's where that's what we'll be working on next episode all right, so we're going to wrap up this video here at this point. We've got the engine ready to put in the tractor. I've got um, the chain and sprocket, which um, will be the basis for the tracks, I think. Um, at least at this point, that's my plan. Uh, I um, have my, my razor weld plasma cutter came from my CNC plasma table, and um, I've got the the first thing I'm going to cut out is the um, engine plate. So um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I'll share that with you next week if I get it done between now and next week. Okay. So once we get the engine plate um, finished, then we're ready to drop the engine in, and um, we can fit up a belt, kind of you know, figure out where we are on that and then, um, start talking about the hydrostat controls. So that'll be up next controls for the hydrostat. Um, we need to know the seating position, that sort of stuff. So that's why we need the engine first, get that in, then we can get the hood and the, and the, um, front grill on and that gives us a seating position. And once we have the seating position, then that gives us the location for the controls. So we can start working on building the control linkage to control the two, the two hydros. Um, meanwhile, I'll be also working on um, starting on the track frame. Um, I've got a piece of um, four by six, four by six rectangular tubing. That'll be the main um, longitudinal member which will span between the two axles 
I need to get some one and a half by three inch rectangular tubing, which is the same size tubing I used um, on this support. But those, the, that will be the size of the um, metal braces that will run crossways and connect the two um, four by six members. Uh, so I've got some, some um, work to do on that. Some of it's in my head, some of it's some sketches, but I'm work thinking about that, thinking ahead about that. And um, so we're making some progress. All right. Thanks for watching. Hit the um, thumbs up, leave a comment if you got any suggestions or something I'm doing wrong. By all means, chime in. I'm, you won't embarrass me or hurt my feelings or anything. Um, uh, I kind of like the, the, the comments you guys are making. Um, some good suggestions, good resources. I've been out looking at some of the links you posted. So I appreciate that. Um, and for those of you that are just, just starting out on this, uh, joining in on this project, um, be sure to subscribe, hit the, hit the bell so that you don't miss uh, notifications for upcoming episodes. Um, so I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.